my name is Emily and this kind of is 108 stitches which is usually a uh, video podcast mostly about knitting and a tiny bit about baseball and some other stuff but today this is not a normal podcast episode this is actually a video that I attempted to record as part of last week's podcast episode so if you watch episode 10 you may know what I'm talking about there was some cutting in the middle and issues with that, but um, I'm going to go through all of my hand knit sweaters. So that's what I've got here in this uh, stack. So we're going to make our way through all of those. Um, yeah, I guess, what should I say at the beginning here? I live, again, my name is Emily. I live in Seattle, Washington um, with my husband, Malthus, and our pup, Norman, who is running around here somewhere. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Emily Kurt, and I'll put that up here and also I will put the information about all the sweaters that I talk about in the description box as well. Um, and I also just wanted to mention that this is actually going to be kind of a heavy week of videos for me on this channel. Um, this video I think will go up first, but I'm also doing Vlogmas type weekly December blogs and uh, I will have that up later this week, and it's been really fun already starting to record those. And then we'll also probably have uh, the usual podcast episode up later this week. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, if this is your first video, or if you are coming back, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you. And yeah, let's just go ahead and talk about my hand knit sweaters. So um, I... I didn't, the first time I knit a sweater was, I believe, in 2018. So I knit my very first sweater in 2018, and for a while I was knitting sweaters at about a rate of one per year. So I guess I, I don't know if I really talked about my knitting journey and like what when I started knitting and why I started knitting, but I started knitting when I was in high school, I think back in, it must have been 20. 12 or 2013, I believe. Um, and I started knitting mainly because actually one of my friends in, I think it was in her Spanish class, but one of her classes, they had someone come in and teach them how to knit. And she taught me and I was hooked immediately. Um, I remember the day that she taught me, I went to Walmart and I got some cheap needles and this horrible bright orange, like traffic cone colored yarn because I was going to knit a scarf for Nafis, who was my boyfriend um, and is now my husband. And um, orange is his favorite color, which is why I did that. But it's a really horrible orange color. And so that was the first thing I ever knit. And then um, I got more into it and I learned a little bit more about different fibers and things. And there is there was a local yarn store in Norman, Oklahoma, where I grew up. And I went there and I got... Um, I got, I think my next project was a striped scarf that I knit for my sister, and I got, I think it was Barocco Vintage, maybe? Um, it was a wool acrylic blend, and that was the first time I'd ever knit with wool, and it was so exciting, and I remember learning how to weave in ends and being like, oh my gosh, I'm never doing stripes again. <laughs> um, but after that, I actually, shortly after that, I started working at the yarn store, so I just picked up the knitting really fast, and Working at the yarn store, I learned so much so quickly. And so after I'd worked there for a while, I, I started kind of expanding my knitting knowledge and um, and eventually like I decided it was time to knit a sweater. So I got the yarn for my first sweater and this was in 2018 and I bought this yarn at the yarn store that I worked at. And yeah, let's, I guess, just jump in and start with the first sweater. So my first ever sweater is this monster. Um, this is the Bellows by Michelle Wang, Michelle Wong, um, and this was a pattern, um, as part of one of the Brooklyn Tweed collections, I believe, and I knit it out of Cascade 220 Superwash held double, um, to make, like, almost a, kind of like a bulky weight. Yarn. This is the silver gray colorway. I don't have in my Ravelry page, I think, the size that I knit, but I don't think my gauge was right on, so it's probably not useful to you anyway. 
But this sweater is, um, it's knit in pieces. So I remember I knit the back piece, the back panel first, and then I did the front two panels. I had to knit the sleeves and then you, um, oh, and I think I picked, maybe picked up and did the collar around, um, this like big shawl collar around the edge and, um, and then seamed it all together. So I actually finished this sweater. I really wanted to finish it in time for when Nafis and I went on our honeymoon to Iceland. I wanted to finish it so that I could wear it in Iceland because I thought it was going to be so cozy and warm. I actually finished this sweater. I was, uh, I finished the collar, I believe, and I seamed the whole thing on the flight, like on the plane on the way to Iceland. Um, and I was able to wear it there. And I have some pictures, I think, of me outside of a yarn shop in Iceland wearing this sweater and holding some yarn. I'll try to put them in here if I can find them and if I can remember, but uh, I would not recommend this as a first sweater. I think um, a, a sweater in pieces is a lot. I would recommend probably a raglan. Um, so like there are other sweaters here maybe that I would recommend above this one as a, as a first ever sweater. I don't dislike the pattern. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't wear it a ton just because it's super heavy. I also made a mistake. Let me show you all. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but can you see like the cables, the little like Y's kind of? The top one on each side, well, so I mean, I messed it up only on one side, but the top one, the base of the Y, I didn't like do the cable right. I didn't do a little twist in this one. If you can tell, these don't match. You may not be able to tell, but, um, so I messed that up and I remember being so upset and then I just messed it up on the other side so that it would match. But, uh, yeah, it is cozy. I can put it on and show you. This is actually, um, aside from the sweater that I just finished that you can see a little peek up here, this is the only cardigan I've ever knit and it was my first one, but, um, this is how it fits. It's very, very cozy with the big collar. And I should wear this more. I don't know why I don't. I used to wear it a ton, but yeah, that is my bellows. So that was my 2018 sweater. Um, oh, one is here. Okay, next, I have my notes here so that I don't forget anything. Next is my 2019 sweater. And you all have probably seen and heard about this one before if you've seen my Instagram or watched any of my podcasts before. But this is my dock light sweater. This is my favorite sweater that I've ever knit. I wear it tons. I wore it yesterday. I wear it all the time. Um, this is dock light is the pattern. It is by Julie Hoover. Um, and I knit it out of Blue Moon Fiber Arts Silky Victoria, which I believe is a wool silk blend. I think. And this is the color True Blood Red. And I love this color so much. But um, I think the yarn is close to a sport weight yarn, so it's a little bit light. And I don't know if I, I don't remember if I had gauge or not, but I have written here that I, um, I knit a size 39. It's like for the 39 inch bust, um, like finished garment measurements. I love this sweater. I, I don't know if you all can see the pattern. It's a brioche, but it also has this kind of these lace panels down the front. I don't know if you can see that very well, but... It's gorgeous and I love it and I wear it all the time. Um, it is knit bottom up and then you set in the sleeves, which I messed up the measurements for like the armholes. And so my armholes are actually a little small, so it's kind of tight um, there, but it's not too tight. And I've worn it enough that it's like stretched out to the right size and everything. But um, I want to knit another one of this sweater this one's actually getting so worn because I wear it all the time that I think if it wears out eventually, I will knit another one. Maybe not in the same yarn, but in the same color. I want another one <laughs> exactly like this. I love the rolled neckline, and I just love everything about the sweater. I kind of want one in gray as well. So, love this sweater. Would recommend it. Next. So now, uh, now we're to 2020. So the rest of the sweaters and things that I knit um, were this year which is kind of crazy to believe. It just goes to show how much more I knit this year than any other year before. Um, I just, yeah, I got way more into it. And of course, like being at home all the time and being in quarantine, it was just, I don't know, perfect 
uh, perfect storm for lots and lots of knitting. But my next sweater, I think I wore in the podcast before as well. This is my soiree sweater, and I knit this. Um, I was inspired by Amy Florence of the Stranded Podcast. She knit one, and I loved it, and I wanted to knit one. And so, um, yeah, so soiree is a sweater pattern by Emily Foden. And I used her yarn as well. This is the Viola yarn. So it is a fingering weight and a mohair held together. So you can see kind of, maybe you can see the halo. It's very fuzzy. Um, and I used Viola sock in the silver birch colorway and Viola mohair lace in the Signet, Signet, I don't know how to say that, um, colorway. And I knit the second size of this. Don't remember if my gauge was on or not. I maybe took note of that in my project page, but maybe didn't. I love the way that this fits. Um, I love, it's a little bit cropped and gosh, the underarms, like this honeycomb pattern is just gorgeous. I love the cables up and down the back as well. I love this sweater. Um, the only thing is like, it's not that I dislike the mohair, but it does like kind of get everywhere when I wear it. Like I always find it, it's like sticking to my lips and shedding and getting everywhere, but it doesn't make me dislike the sweater. I still really love it. I love the fit. I love how soft and fuzzy it is. Um, would definitely recommend this one. This one is also knit bottom up. And then you don't set in the sleeves. You pick up around the armhole and then knit the sleeves like a two. Um, and I love it. Yeah, I, I really like the sweater. I like the color and I like the fit and I like everything. So I would recommend this one. Okay. My next sweater is my pavement, which is a little wrinkly from being folded, but this is my pavement sweater by Vera Valamaki. Is that who it's by? Yes. Um, and I was wearing this in my last podcast episode, so I think if you go look at episode 10, you can see me wearing it. Um, the yarn is Grenoey in their sock um, 7525. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, um, sock base, so a fingering weight yarn. And in the colorway, dark arches, and I knit the small. I don't know if that's the smallest one or second smallest, but I just have written here that I knit the size small. Um, so this was my actually, this is actually my first raglan sweater. Um, and I, I liked it just fine. I liked the raglan construction. Um, it felt like it went really fast, even though it was fingering weight yarn. Um, I don't know what to say about it. It has kind of like a rounded, it has short rows at the back, of course, at the back of the neck. And then it also has short rows at the bottom to make these like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like kind of raised on the sides. It has like a scoop. Um, so short rows down there and I knit the uh, sleeves a little short. They're kind of like elbow length sleeves. And I don't know why I did that. I think I was just ready to be done. I kind of wish that I had knit them a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. They're just kind of like in a weird middle range, but that's okay. Um, I really like the way that this drapes. It's very nice. And um, if I knit another sweater out, uh, well, I am doing this, but if I knit Going forward, if I'm knitting sweaters out of Grenoe yarn, I would not pick this base just because it's not the softest mm -hmm. of her bases. I would do the 8515 or um, singles or something, or D I think she has a DK base as well. So, um, but I do like this and I would recommend it if people are interested. The only thing is that um, the way that the like raglans are, it's a little bit tight. Um, like the arms are definitely tighter than the body. And the armpit is like kind of really tight. It's like up, up on really, really close. Um, there's like not a lot of um, space there, I guess. Which at first I thought I didn't like, but then wearing it, it doesn't bother me. So it's kind of like the dock light since I messed up the armholes there as well. But it's not too bad. Um, and I, I do like this. I like the color and everything too. It very much feels like a fall sweater type shirt thing. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Uh, next up is my Lydia. So I do have a couple 
in here that are either tanks or short sleeve shirts and I just I wanted to show them because I thought people might be interested I know they're not sweaters but they're like mm -hmm. garments so I kind of thought that counted but I have here um, my Lydia tank and I think I've worn this on the podcast as well before this is not my first Lydia I knit one for my sister last year for Christmas I gave it to her for Christmas and I'll see, I may be able to put a picture of it up here um, if you're interested in seeing that. It is in like a really light variegated kind of pinkish color and it's very pretty as well. But um, this is just like a lace tank. I and I think I said this already, but I, I am wearing it I think in like episode two or three of the podcast if you want to see me wearing it. Um, has really gorgeous lace on the bottom and it's just like a cropped tank. This yarn, oh, okay, I should tell you, the pattern is by Courtney Little, and the yarn is Madeline Tosh Pashmina, which is a sport weight yarn with, um, it's mostly wool, but I think it has some cashmere in it as well, and this yarn actually was a gift from one of my friends. And I knit the, oh, the colorway is Tarte. This is like one of my favorite reds. It's almost the exact same color as my dock light. I love this color. Um, and what was I going to say here? I knit the size 30, so you're supposed to have some negative ease. So this size gives me some negative ease. It's nice and fitted, and I really like it. Um, I think it's fun. It has a little V in the back and then a higher neck in the front. And this one was knit, um, actually, my knitting group, uh, we all knit one at the same time. Um, so we did kind of like a little mini knit along. Um, earlier this year and so we all have kind of different colors and styles and so it's really cool to see them all but this one is mine and now oh okay one more before that my next one so this is the last one I did before I started podcasting so this is the last one you all may not have seen if you've watched all my episodes but this is the Panglossian which is a pattern by Morgan Wolterstorff um, you may know her as More Thunder on Instagram, but I knit this as a mystery knit along. So I guess it wasn't really a mystery, but so she'd like shown pictures of it before, but uh, it was one of those things where you get like a clue every day. And it basically took, I think like the first three weeks of June. Um, but this was my first real color work project. Um, I did like a kind of practice project before I did this. So I did a like a little cowl, a color work cowl just to practice, just simple. And then I knit this and um, the yarn is, the white is Cascade Heritage in just in the white color. And the green is Grenoe in the with nail colorway. I don't know if you can see that at all, but it is the most Gorgeous green. I love this green. And this is again in there 7525. Oop, focus on me. Yeah, this is again in there 7525 um, merino nylon base. And I, uh, so, and this is also, this is uh, a DK weight sweater, so I held the fingering double throughout. And I'm, I love the way that it looks, I don't love the way that it fits. I don't know if that's something that I did wrong or if like yoke sweaters just don't work for me or if it's this pattern specifically. Like I think I'll try again to do another like color work yoke in the future. But this one, it's like weird and kind of gapey around my like chest armpit region. And so I don't really wear it a ton. But I'm happy that I knit it. I think it's really beautiful um, and I like having it. Um, I knit the size one, so the small size of this one. And what else is there to say about it? I don't know. Um, I didn't uh, catch any of my floats because I didn't know that, that was a thing. I'd never really done real color work before, and so I didn't know that I needed to catch my floats. So I didn't. Um, so you can see, I guess I can show you the inside. Here it is. So you can see I have really long floats in there, but I think it looks okay actually. I just have to be careful when I put it on. And again, if I don't wear it, then it probably doesn't matter that I didn't catch my floats. But um, yeah, that is my Panglossian. 
I think outside of the knit along, she does still have this pattern available. So if you're interested in knitting this, you can. Um, you can purchase the pattern. Okay, just a couple more. So these are ones that I've knit since I started podcasting. This is my Rift Tee, which is a tee pattern by Jacqueline Seaslack. And I knit it out of Rowan Lima in the Peru colorway. And Nelfis calls this my porridge sweater because it's kind of like oatmeal-y colored. Um, I love this. I think the, the yarn is really, really nice and soft. It's kind of like a chain ply yarn. And I love on the sides, there's this like twisted rib detail. Um, and it has a split hem. There are lots of uh, ways that you can kind of customize this pattern and make it your own. She has two neckline options and she has like a boat neck and a V neck. And I did one on the front and one on the back and you can choose to do whatever you want, whatever combination of those. <laughs> um, and then you're supposed to do, or the pattern calls for the hem to be longer in the back, but to make this shirt truly reversible, I just did the hem in the front and the back the same. But this, I think um, this would be a good kind of first garment pattern if you're interested. Uh, it, it knits up really fast and easy. You can do it with long sleeves if you want to. It's basically just, um, you go from the bottom, you go from the bottom up, and you just like knit a big tube until you get to the armholes and then you knit it flat on the front and the back and then you pick up and do the sleeves. So pretty easy and this was speedy. I think I knit it super fast. And oh, I knit the 40 inch size, but I think my gauge was a little bit tight. So I don't quite have the positive ease that I would if this was like, this is not actually a 40 inch bust sweater or shirt. It's a little bit smaller than that, but I'm really happy with it. It's really soft and cozy and the pattern was quick and I really like this one. And then my last completed sweater, this is the most recently, well kind of, I did kind of finish this one yesterday, but this is my Cozy Classic Raglan, which is a pattern by Jessie May. Um, this is another one that is fingering weight and mohair held together. And my fingering weight is Madeline Tosh Euro Sock in the Stormborn colorway. So it's like a white with speckles. And the blue is Biche et Bouche. Their mohair, I think it's just called like silk mohair or something. And the color for that is dark blue turquoise. So it makes this really nice kind of like marled effect. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I knit the size, the second size of this one, and I did not do any waist shaping, and I just did the sleeves, um, with decreases all the way down on the sleeves, and I also, I think I knit the body a couple inches longer than it was called for, um, so not quite as cropped as the potter, pattern calls for, um, but I'm very happy with this one as well, um, I don't know what to say about it. This one I think would be a pretty good solid uh, first sweater pattern. Uh, the instructions are really great and I like the way the raglan increases are and I think a raglan would be a good first sweater pattern. And it's a little heavier than fingering weight yarn so it'll go a little faster. And this one went really fast for me. I think I knit it in like two, two to three weeks. Um, but I really like this pattern and I really like this sweater. It's another one with the mohair that like it does shed a tiny bit, but it's super soft and fun. So I like it a lot. And that is it. That's my last sweater. And this one I finished, um, I don't know how long ago, maybe a month ago. And uh, I have one more, which I won't go into a whole bunch of detail because I haven't talked about it on the podcast yet. But this is a test knit that I did for Ozetta, um, Haley of Ozetta has a, um, a new pattern. This is the Oversized Seasons cardigan. And um, I knit it out of Peace Fleece Worsted in the Palomino colorway. And I will share more info about how it went and whether I like it and all that kind of stuff on my next podcast episode. But um, I'm happy to have another cardigan in my sweater stack. But yeah, that is, that's it. That's all I've got. So thank you so much for tuning into this. And if you're interested, 
please check out, if you haven't already, check out my uh, regular knitting podcast, 108 Stitches. And you can find me, again, on Ravelry and Instagram as Emily Kurt. And, yeah, thank you so much. I hope you do lots of knitting and watch lots of baseball. And have a great week. Bye. Thank you.